Nations. My guest is Naftali Bennett. He's Education Minister. He's also leader of the right-wing Jewish Home Party. His prescription for ending the crisis, to remove once and for all any hope of the Palestinians for an independent sovereign state. What makes him think that they, or the outside world, would ever accept that? Naftali Bennett, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. It's great being here. You gave an interview last year. You were asked about the freeze in the peace process, uh, a freeze that you supported. You said the process was suicide. We saved the country. Looking at the violence today, it doesn't look as though you saved the country at all, does it? Well, Tim, you know, uh, for the past 100 years, we've had uh, roughly 40 rounds of uh, violence with uh, radical Islam. In 1921, 1929, 1936, 1939. And that's this the whole is, point. It's not getting better. Th this is, it? is nothing new. Uh, and until uh, the Muslim world accepts uh, Israel's uh, right to exist, and we, we were here way before the Islam even started, uh, it, it will go on. But you know what? Amid uh, all this uh, uh, turbulence, Israel is growing, Israel is thriving. Uh, as are its people. So I'm very optimistic. U.S. Secretary of State says if you want to know what a one-state solution looks like, take a look at what's happening at the moment. Anyone who thinks otherwise can measure what unitary looks like by just looking at what's been occurring in Israel over the last few weeks. He says the two-state solution, there's no alternative to it. Quite the contrary. What we're seeing is a result of the Oslo Accords that injected uh, terrorists so into Kerry Israel. Knows nothing. I'm, you, you know, I'm, I'm uh, talking about the point. Uh, the, the point is that when we went 100% all the way in uh, 1999 in the Camp David uh, Accords, Ehud uh, Barak was willing to divide Jerusalem, willing to form a full-fledged Palestinian state. You know what happened? They murdered a thousand Israelis as a result. Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa, we had buses blowing up everywhere. So the th murders this, uh, go on on th all sides. This, don't they? this approach, no. The no. murders go on on I, all I, sides. I vehemently disagree. Uh, when, you wrote, when, a, you wrote when, about it in August when, in the New York when Times. Someone, you talked about Jewish extremists when someone, murdering an 18 month uh, uh, old that, baby. And you know what the big difference is? When a very, you know, everyone has extremists. The difference is. This is what I'm saying. The difference, but you Tim, just the difference it. Tim, is that when there's an extremist on our side, the whole leadership of Israel goes out of its way to, to fight that. Whereas on the uh, Palestinian side, when they murder Jews, you know what uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas does? He pays the money. Well, he funds you, you, families. You, you no, say this. this is you important. Say this. No, no, he gives prizes to murderers I while we put them in jail. And that's the precise difference. Well, do you? you? You blame the violence on Palestinian incitement. You said Abbas is the head of the snake of incitement. I think that's the term. That is correct. Used. But you two are blamed in, for intentionally provoking and inciting violence, specifically by the defense minister in the cabinet in which you serve. IDF Army reported, uh, the radio reported October 7th, Moshe Yalon told the cabinet, ministers from the Jewish Home Party, your party, are provoking the field and causing an increase in the number of settler attacks, both on Palestinians and soldiers. Yeah, that's nonsense. What we're so here, he doesn't the, know what the, he's the, talking the, about the, either. The he's big, the defense the, minister the, of Tim, Israel. The, the, big picture is, the big picture is that we're in our Jewish home here. Okay, It's been our Jewish home for about 3,800 years. Uh, we had a Jewish state here 3,000 years ago. We had a Jewish state that was destroyed by Romans in uh, 70 AD. We were expelled by the Spaniards from Spain 1,000 years ago. Hold on. Extremism. We were expelled from England uh, roughly 1,000 years ago. We had the Germans who butchered us, and now we're at what home. Is that? What and does that I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. And unlike, unlike where you live, Tim, you, you live in London, and I know that it, it's, a, it's a walk in the park compared to being in the toughest region in the world. And Heck, we're can surrounded. You just the point? I, I will address. Can you just address I, I'm addressing the point? precisely the point. What we're yeah. doing here is building the only democracy that respects full equal rights of the Arab minority, of the Jews, of everyone, in the midst of the most turbulent, difficult place okay, well, on I'll, Earth. I'll come to, I'll and come you're to coming and, and attacking. That that, that, that's precisely the common media approach of attacking. I'm not attacking. We're, we're on the right side. We're I'm on the right attacking. side. I'm telling you what be, the defense be, minister because, uh, is saying okay, to you. I, you know, you to misquoted. You. I, I don't know what you misquoted. He says by but, saying but, that the army's hands are tied and that the army is not I'm doing happy enough to, report to stop the him. current wave of terror, this fuels the people who choose to take matters into their own I, hands. I'm He's accusing you of doing that. I'm very happy that the 
army's hands are no longer tied because of what I pushed for. We will defend ourselves. Don't the create current, a symmetry where there is no symmetry. The current, they are attacking us. We're defending ourselves. The current violence, and Tim will continue Minister, to do that. The current violence has centered around the long-standing procedures relating to the holy sites in Jerusalem, specifically the Temple Mount, the Haram al-Sharif. The Prime Minister has been at pains to tell the Palestinians and the rest of the world that the status quo is not going to be changed, the status quo whereby Jews do not pray at the Temple Mount. But some leading right-wingers have been undermining the Prime Minister, haven't they? Your Justice Minister, Ayelet Shaket, said a year ago that Jews have the right to pray at the Temple Mount. Your MP, Yinon Magal, weighed in, said he wants a new temple built there. This is undermining the idea that the status quo is not going to be changed, isn't it? You want to change the status quo, don't you? Tim, the only place in the Middle East that exercises full religious rights for all religions, Christi Christianity and Muslims and Jews, is Israel. So no one should tell us uh, how to govern Temple Mount. Temple Mount is open for Muslims to pray, and they, roughly two and a half Muslims have prayed at Temple Mount in the past year, while only about 12,000 Jews. That's just let's put things in well, proportion. Let's also and point we, out that we, there is a large amount of rabbinical advice on this and views that says Jews should not actually pray on the Temple Mount. Isn't wow, it? I, you know, you, now, you, now you you're know representing this. the rabbis. You know that, that, that's a whole you know new, that's a whole you know, new level. You know this. The, this the, is the status quo, isn't it, that Jews do not, by and large, pray at the I, I don't dispute the status quo. It will go on, and I'm very happy that uh, now uh, British uh, journalists are, are quoting rabbis in order to promote Jewish halachic uh, rules. So the reality, the reality, Tim, Tim. Now back to reality. Yeah. Uh, we have a very sensitive thing called Temple Mount, the holiest place on earth for mm -hmm. Jews, the third holiest place on earth for Muslims. We'll continue to run this in a very responsible way, unlike the Palestinians, who, by the way, burnt. Joseph tomb just two weeks ago because that's what happens when you you know and so you're, and so hold you're on, not hold trying on, to Tim. change you're not Tim, trying to no Tim, I said can I'm I just be clear I, I you're said not we're trying not trying to change, to change but Tim quo. Tim okay. Coptics in the, in the Egypt are murdered Christians in the Palestinian Authority are murdered they're okay, leaving can we Israel just stay by, with the, the and topic. the only place no uh, the, the topic is who takes care of religious freedom and the only country in the Middle East Tim that takes care of full Religious freedom is Israel. Let's look the, at reality the topic, as it is. The topic was, was incitement because you accused Mahmoud Abbas of incitement. There, there is a rich, yes, because there is a rich Abbas, history of incitement no, from the right, right wing. You're right. Hold from on, the right hold wing on, Tim, in this country. Because you mentioned, there? you mentioned Mahmoud Abbas. Look, Mahmoud Abbas pays a, a, a monthly salary to the family of this. every murderer. You said this. Mahmoud said Abbas this. has uh, parades. Uh, reign the Shahids, those who, who you murder said this, this, but murder I'm, I'm others. saying to you, there's so, a rich yes. history of incitement from the right wing here in Israel, isn't there? The Prime Minister himself hasn't shied away from it. He was forced to apologize after tweeting on election day that the Arabs are coming out in droves to vote. The rule of the right is in danger. The Arab voters are moving in droves. The message clearly inciting anti-Arab sentiment. Quite Clearly the contrary. Inciting. You know, I'm, I'm Minister of Education of... Two Would this point, be tolerated on, in any other two, country? 2.2 million uh, kids, including Arab kids, including Druze kids, and I take care of each and every child as if it's my own. I don't care what race they are or what, what religion. Israel, with all its imperfections, is certainly the most democratic, the most a tolerant country in the region. You want to compare it to Lebanon or to Syria, perhaps, where they're uh, cutting uh, heads off, or perhaps to Saudi Arabia, or perhaps to Egypt. Show Listen, me where the tolerance is. I think you're the minister for here. You're not the minister for S and that's why, Syria that's, or Lebanon And that's or precisely, Tim, why I am promoting and, this and, tolerance. why do you and I'm tolerate proud. the incitement whenever comes the, from the right? Whenever why? there's incitement, why? I don't accept any incitement, whether it's from the right, whether it's from the left. It's so Arab. did you condemn I, Eli Ben Dahan? I, did you I condemn, condemn him? I condemn them, for blanket what he said. condemn all incitement of anyone from any side. He said but last the big year that the souls of all Jews are higher than those of Christians, Muslims, or anyone else. Did you condemn him for that? I condemn This is a all, serving minister. All, no, he's not a minister. You should do your homework. But I condemn all he's incitement. He's deputy defense minister. Right. Uh, um, I condemn all sort of incitement. But the difference is that over the past uh, two months, uh, dozens 
of Muslim radicals have come out to murder Jews. But I'm asking And Jews you, are not murdering I'm, I'm, Arabs. I'm talking, I'm and, talking and to the I, Arabs I, about what they and do. I'm, I'm talking to you and, about and what the, you do. So about in, what you in my do. backyard, I fight incitement, and I will always fight incitement, whether it's against so Jews or... So did you come out or, and condemn yes, Eli condemn, Ben Dahan I condemn for saying every that. sort of incitement very clearly. So how is that he was still allowed to serve in a government? I, you know, after saying something like that in a government we were, which claims to serve uh, uh, everyone, and we do serve everyone. You know what? But Every Arab other people and I from other smiling, religions as inferior. And, and, and I'll tell you this. I'll tell as you this. Inferior. Every Arab in the Muslim world would pray to be in my education system, in Israel's education system, because they get here full equal rights. In fact, they get more investment per child than in the Jewish sector. Your president. And, and that's why I'm so proud of this. Minister. And, and while, you, you know what you're doing, you're taking very narrow examples. This is very common in, in the European media, and you're doing a good job at that. And twisting the reality. No, I'm not the reality I'm is, putting it to is, you. No, you're, you're to twisting challenge reality, what you which are is fine. Saying. That's your job. It's, with, it's with okay to challenge you. what you, you know, are it, saying. It reminds me of the, the latest BBC where, where uh, an Arab had uh, knifed a, a Jew and, <clears> and uh, the Arab was killed. So the, uh, obviously the title was An Arab Killed. And no one says that he tried to murder a Jew. Naftali Bennett. So, so let's Naftali look at Bennett, reality as it the is. The larger issue, and, and this is something that your president has drawn attention to, he says Israel is sick with racism. These are his words. He said last year he's also horrified by the thuggishness that, that's permeated the national dialogue. Why don't you speak out about that? I will. You know, we have one and a half million Arabs living in Israel. Uh, they exercise full equal rights. They have enjoy all the privileges that every Jew, they vote the for. The president says there's severe Hold on. discrimination. Uh, 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 do you want to hear or do you want to talk? The, every Jew and, and every Arab votes for the Knesset. We have a dozen Arab members of Knesset. I, I can't recall uh, Christian members of parliament. In fact, I don't recall any free parliament in the radical Muslim world. So we're here, uh, a beautiful example of a, a lighthouse in a storm. We've got... And you know, yet the, you're the sick with racism, no, we're not to the sick. president. No, so I, I dispute that. I, I disagree. I and he says disagree. there's severe discrimination against the Arab community, which is inconsistent with the democratic nature of the state which you keep trumpeting. And that's why, as he Minister of, of, of uh, Economy, that's why, as Minister of Economy, I opened dozens of employment centers for Arab women. That's why, as Minister of Education, I'm providing the Arabs with Hebrew from kindergarten and not third grade, so they'll be able to get a good job. That's why I'm allowing Israelis to learn Arabic. That's why I learned Arabic, uh, for heaven's sake, because we are going to live here together. And that's no, why the same No one's going minister. anywhere. We have to realize that no one's going anywhere. The Jews are here to stay. The Arabs are here to stay. We have to live together. The economy and we have ministry, to face that. Minister, the same economy ministry that you used to head reported that complaints of anti-Arab discrimination increased by more than 120% in the first half of this year. I think many Jews... That doesn't uh, support what you're it, saying. It totally supports it. We're in the midst of a <clears> wave of uh, Muslim Arab terror. And I can understand, even if I don't accept, I can understand the fear of a Jew uh, who's afraid that the, the person next to him will murder him. That's why we have to fight intolerance. But first of and foremost, we have to bring back security. The discrimination that President Rivlin talked about goes back many years, doesn't it? Because if you take the Orr Commission report on the causes of the Second Intifada, which was led by Judge Theodore Orr, specifically the events of October 2000, he talked about the government handling of the Arab sector as primarily neglectful and discriminatory. He said the state did not do enough or try hard enough to create equality for its Arab citizens or to uproot discriminatory or unjust phenomena. And we're fixing just that. And that's but why not as according education, to the president. That's he still why, talks about severe that, that's discrimination. Why, uh, all right. And that's why, as education minister, I've invested a billion shekel in the Arab community. Look. I care about every child in Israel, whether he's Jewish, whether he's Arab. We're, not, we're in an imperfect place. We're not in la-la land. We're in a reality, a very tough reality, where we want to create a beautiful Jewish democracy uh, in Israel while we're surrounded by the craziest people in the world. It might be easier to live in London mm. uh, and, and uh, sit and give comments than when you live here, but we live in a reality. And, and do you think you're helped in doing that, in creating the kind of society you want, by bulldozing 
the houses of suspected terrorists. Not suspected. We're talking about bulldozing the house of terrorists. Something and that's been strongly no, condemned no, no in the past by the international community. Uh, okay. It was given up by the army. Uh, so, so the army me, gave it up themselves. Look, here's the deal. These terrorists are willing to die. Now, if someone's coming and willing to kill you, and you know he doesn't care, uh, he's willing to commit suicide, then the only way to, to prevent it is, is if he knows that his house will be destroyed and, and therefore you create uh, uh, the, the uh, deterrence necessary to prevent the next uh, terror attack. We don't want to do this. But when, when hundreds of Muslims, um, radical Islamic terrorists are, are out to kill me and my family, yes, I will defend myself. And you know what? I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm proud G of it. General Ehud Shani, who wrote the report in 2005 on the basis of which the army stopped bulldozing houses, he said uh, just the other day, he said that Palestinian resolve was actually strengthened by the demolitions and that the motivation of individual Palestinians to fight against Israel was probably increased by these demolitions. So, I, it's, a, I, so it's a counterproductive policy. That's what he says. I differ. I think that uh, when a terrorist now, the, the equation for a terrorist is very positive. He knows this. I go, I kill a Jew or two, I, uh, I die, that's fine. I get to, to, to have uh, 70 virgins in the next world. My family will get a monthly salary. Uh, I'll be paraded as a hero. We have to change this equation. That's the problem. As long as the equation is, is so uh, uh, powerful, they're going to continue killing dozens of Jews. And, and at, the same time, at the same time as you pulling down houses, and there are actually a lot of thousands of demolitions that are pending by the civilian administration. At the same time as you want to do that, you want the Palestinians to recognize Israel as the Jewish state. Israel is Jewish the Jewish state. state. When, when Israelis themselves can't agree on what the Jewish state is. The Jewish state is very simple. It's my home. Uh, what about the disagreements of no, the, we, the, the we, nation I, state I'll bill? Just point out what that, about that, the nation state that, bill? That, you, you know, you're, talk, you're asking about all Israel the, as the a Jewish state. Yes. Just to open up the, the most popular book in the world, it's called the Bible. And you can find the, the Why the do connection. they have to say it? I, I, don't know, I, I don't need them to say anything. I don't need, their, I don't need anything from them. So why are they being asked no, I'm, I, I'm to not, say this? I'm not asking them. The Prime Minister I, I'm is. Not suggesting to form the Prime a, Minister is. I'm not suggesting to form a Palestinian state in the midst of Israel. I think that would be a profound mistake. I uh, vehemently oppose the notion of forming another failed Arab state in the heart of Israel. That's crazy. Well, the, all the rest are falling apart and disintegrating into tribal uh, uh, structures. So here, we're going to try another artificial one. Why? Do I want to commit suicide? I'll also remind you, okay. Tim. Hold on. I'll remind you. We tried this. In 2005, we did the big experiment in Gaza. We did all three things the international community wanted. We pulled back to the 67 lines. We pulled out all our soldiers. And you know what? We expelled 8,000 Jews from their home by force. And what did we get days after? And you the, still the, control days, everything that moves they, into no, Gaza and no, goes out of that's Gaza. That's blatantly you wrong. You stood outside. No, because what happened... Even David be, Cameron on, a few years Tim, ago called it the prison, Tim, didn't he? He said it, it was we, a it, it prison. It was going to be the Singapore of the Middle East. It was open. But then but they... With you guarding the, it? No. With you guarding no, it, it was going to be a, the you're, Singapore of the Middle East? Besides the fact that you're stating wrong facts, everything's okay. <laughs> the reality is quite the contrary. When we gave them Gaza, we said, go build a Singapore. And you, wanna, you know what? They shot thousands of missiles from there onto and Israel, which is why, yes, we need to defend ourselves. What do you do when every centimeter of land that you hand the radical Islamist turns into a base of Iran and radical Islam? What do you do? We did it in Lebanon, and now we have 150,000 missiles there. We did it You're, in Judea and Samaria, I, I, I and understand. they killed 1,000 Israelis. I, I, I understand. I'm talking about what you do. I'm talking about what you do. And what you're not prepared to do is to end the occupation because you don't think it is an occupation. That's correct. You always say, how are, can are you, you occupy in London? How can you occupy land? How can you occupy land when it's you know, there, already your Jews, own? Jews have been but, living in Jerusalem way before uh, British people are, were living in London. But your own high court okay. calls it uh, an occupation. Your no, own high don't. court actually calls it belligerent occupation. Uh, on an international basis, international law, we're talking about disputed territory. A right former now. head of Shin Bet. Avraham Shalon says we've become a brutal occupation force. Here's a man who was charged with the security of the state of Israel. Kami Gillen, another former head of Shin Bet, saying we're making life intolerable for millions of people. Directly challenging the things that you're telling That's us correct. About, about what you're doing for Israel. Well, That's if you and I go out on the street now, we can walk around, you'll meet Arabs who have good jobs, 
who vote for the Knesset, the same Knesset I'm a member in. These are the former That's heads pretty of Shin amazing. Bet. These are former heads of Shin Bet. Yeah, you know, I always believe reality is stronger than any words. You know, you know very well that one and a half million Israeli Arabs vote for the Knesset, they pay taxes in Israel, they get all equal rights in Israel, and I'm their very good education minister trying to do my best to make their uh, kids get a better education. That's the reality. There's no place better on earth for Arabs than in Israel. One That's the, the reality. One of the it things... might be tough for you to, to accept that, but that is the reality. One, well, it's not up to me to accept or not. But one of the things that you said last year was that the world isn't interested in your conflict. So you get foreign ministers, you get presidents, you get people visiting from all over the world. The conflict doesn't interest them. So if the conflict doesn't interest them, why are you so exercised over something like boycott, divestment, and sanctions? Why does the Anti-Defamation League point out that the number of BDS campaigns has doubled in America over the last academic year? Why are you allocating special funds, 100 million shekels, to fight boycott, divestment, and sanctions if you're not worried about it? Actually, Israel's economy has never been better. We had uh, $2.5 billion of VC investment in uh, startup companies two years ago, 3.6 billion last year, 4.5 billion this year. You know, the, the GPS. And what about BDS? You, hold on. The GPS that you use to get to work has a, is, is Israeli technology. What about BDS? The, the stent in your heart is Israeli technology. The water technology that grew this plant is Israeli technology. Intel chips are uh, made in Israel. And the EU you know, is now you know examining what? proposals that reach into your banking, your loans and mortgages, your qualifications from settlement institutions, as well as the tax exempt status of European charities that deal with your settlements. So they're going to be attacking your financial institutions. Well, the reality is that uh, we've never and you're been. You're not worried we, about that? Uh, we're always concerned about everything, but, and especially when there's countries who who exercise... That doesn't uh, sound I, very serious. I, 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 we're always Tim, concerned about well, we everything. We are concerned, but, you know, I come from the high-tech industry. I ran a high-tech company that today secures 70% of North American transactions and UK transactions. Citibank, Chase, Bank of America are all protected. M hundreds of millions of customers are protected by technology that my personal engineers and my company developed. I don't think the world's about to give up with it. And what if European banks don't want to trade with I, I, you anymore? They no, don't want no, to do business no, with you European anymore banks, because that's the threat, isn't it? European that's the banks, prism uh, th through which they're looking at look, Israel if now. someone wants to give up on the uh, best technology in the world, only second, you know, in terms of size, we're only second to Silicon Valley. Uh, Israel has the best high-tech in industry per capita. You, you keep saying that's but, fine. But what about the no, you're, attitude? You're, you're, what you, about the attitude of the rest of the world? You're either worried about it, which your foreign ministry constantly says it is, or you say everything's fine. The, the rest of the world isn't concerned about our conflict. No, the, the rest uh, of the world uh, uh, is uh, very concerned no, about no, your the, conflict. There is one unique place. I'll, I'll tell you. you know, China, India. Our, our commerce is growing exponentially. United States. Western Europe, the EU, there are pockets of anti-Semitism that whatever we do, they don't care that... Uh, why is it anti-Semitism? Why, why is it just criticism? Well, well, why couldn't you it, just it's, accept it's criticism? You know why? I'll tell you why. Because uh, when you apply a double standard in Israel, a standard that you don't apply in yourself, but you do apply in Israel. When you see that uh, Assad is butchering a quarter of a million of its, its own people, and what you really care about is building another kindergarten or not in a settlement, I call that double standard. When you see the only democracy in the Middle East fight for its life and defend itself, and then you talk about excessive force, that's a double standard. I call that anti-Semitism. It's been around for about 2,000 years, and it stemmed from Europe. But I, I want to say most of Europe is not anti-Semitic, but there are uh, pockets of it. And unfortunately, especially with the growing Islamic uh, um, presence in Europe, it is growing. This is a problem. You know, more than, radical more than, Islam is anti-Semitic. More, more than 130 countries have recognized, at the UN, have recognized Palestine as a state. And you want the Palestinians to give up forever on this idea of a Palestinian state. You're too late, aren't you? No, I'm not. You know, uh, let me way tell you, too late for Tim, this. Let me tell you something. I have four children, uh, a 10-year-old, 8-year-old, 6, and 3. We live just 10 minutes from the proposed Palestinian state. If we were to form a Palestinian state according to these 130 countries and place a radical Islamic state just 10 minutes from my house, I would put my children at a harm's way. Doesn't that, have to be a radical that's Islamic not state, gonna happen. does it? Well, Doesn't it does. have to be. Uh, in, in La La Land, it's not. In reality, it is. Because we're not living in a soap opera, Tim. We live in Israel. We live in the heart 
of the toughest place in the world, and, and yet we still have a, a, a vibrant uh, democracy. I'm proud of it. But despite we need to what your ourselves. president says, despite all, despite the criticism, despite all our imperfections, though I'm sure the, the rest of the world is perfect. I, I want to see what what the Londoners and what Berliners would do if uh, thousands of uh, radical Islamic terrorists would be running around trying to kill them. Let's see what what did the Ferguson, Missouri do? Was that excessive force? What what did the uh, in Baltimore? You know, every police uh, uh, force in the world would do exactly what we're doing, probably much more in terms of defending its people. That's all we're doing. We're defending ourselves. Naftali Bennett, thanks for being on Conflict Zone. Thank you very much. This was great. Thank you. Very much.